why is it going to be so difficult to get to net zero? Strange as this will sound, one of the best ways I have of explaining this is via Lego, OK? Lego, this might sound a little odd, but, you know, we're all familiar with these blocks. They are made of a fossil fuel product. They're made of a type of plastic called ABS, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. And it is made from oil, actually, a little bit of gas as well, oil and gas. And it's really good at doing what it does. We all know Lego blocks are really rigid, you know, they're really precise, they stick together pretty well. It's really impressive. But for a long time now, people at Lego in Denmark have been trying to work out how to do it, how to make these blocks without using fossil fuels. And they've got a few prototypes. So they've used recycled bottles, plastic bottles, and they've turned them into the blocks. And things were looking pretty promising up until a few months ago. And they said, actually, despite all of the work that's gone into this, it took more energy to make these non-oil, non-direct oil produced Lego blocks than it did to make them out of oil. And it kind of underlines a point, doesn't it? Getting away from fossil fuels is quite difficult because fossil fuels are actually pretty good at doing what they do. They're pretty good at making Lego blocks. They are very good at, for instance, providing aviation fuel. They're very good at making the fertilizer that we sprinkle on our fields, nitrogen-based fertilizer. And also there are other difficult things where there's carbon emissions from things like making cement, which we're not entirely sure how we're gonna deal with in the future. And that gets to the number of the issue here. Let's, let's just have a look at where our energy comes from at the moment and compare it about where it might come from in the future. Because we are living right now, like it or not, we're living in a fossil fuel world. About 80% of our energy comes from fossil fuels. You've got renewables up there, but 80% of it is gas, oil and coal. Raising the question, if we look out into the future, to 2050, at where we might well be, so the International Energy Agency has tried to work this out. They've got various different scenarios. The most optimistic scenario, so the most ambitious one, shows that we get our energy from these places instead. So different picture here. This is 2050, and this is kind of where we might hope to be. Renewables, a lot of it, You've got nuclear there, but look at gas and oil and coal's a little sliver there. They're still accounting for 22% of all of our energy. This is on the basis that everything goes really well. So, you know, this talk about phasing out fossil fuels, well, none of the plans for how we get to net zero actually entail a complete phasing out, at least by 2050. Worth just bearing that in mind. And also asking the question, so what are we actually using the fossil fuels for? So let's take that, OK, we're going to move it across here and we're going to break it down. So we're breaking down where in 2050 those fossil fuels are being used. Quite a chunk of that, the green bit there, is being used to make things like plastic. So Lego, that's where your Lego is. And the good news there is that's not actually creating any carbon emissions. So from the point of view of carbon emissions, that's, we can kind of uh, overlook that for the time being, but it, we're still using oil potentially for it. But there's other things as well. There's transport, there's power, there's industry, there's energy production. All of that's quite a lot. You know, you've got a lot of fossil fuel production in 2050. Now, some of that, move that across again, some of that, that stuff, might well be captured. So you'll use carbon capture and storage. This is, again, the plan from the IEA. Carbon capture and storage, and you put that away. So it's not necessarily going into the atmosphere. But there are some question marks over how viable that is as an alternative. And that's why a lot of people are concerned about this idea of abated versus unabated emissions. Well, the black bit there is unabated emissions. The green bit is abated emissions. But some people think it's a cop out either way. But the issue is, like I say, this is not just this is actually the most optimistic, the most ambitious of all of the kind of mainstream forecasts. This is, this is kind of the forecast that a lot of people at Just Stop Oil say you need to look at because they're saying about no new oil discoveries and exploration. And yet there is still fossil fuel at the heart of it, uh, even unabated fossil fuel. So worth just noting that. And finally, it's just worth asking the question, you know, that what I was showing you there is kind of pretty much one of the most ambitious plans to get to net zero. Where are we now versus that plan? Well, this is showing you the global carbon budget. And it's basically showing where carbon emissions have gone recently. So they've risen up and up and up and up. And if you want to get down and kind of be more or less in line with the, that IEA plan, get down so you can try and keep temperatures from rising above 1.5 degrees, that line needs to go down really quickly indeed. So where are we versus that line? Have a look at this. That's where we are. We're already beyond that line, which is why for a lot of people, the notion that we can realistically get to 1.5 or keep things within 1.5 degrees, while also keeping living standards where they are, while also just observing the reality of the world at the moment, it seems quite unlikely right now and just underlining how big a challenge we're facing.